everyone who's here today for our Facebook Live event and all the people who watch us all over. And so I want to talk about a response. So when people, if you watch us on Facebook and then you share it, then someone else shares it and all of that, that's great. And I'm the one who answers anybody who puts a remark on there. And everyone is usually, everyone's always kind. Great service, great earrings, you know, like, your hair look great, you know, whatever it all is. And last week, I got a note from someone I don't know, because what we do on Monday then, I boost the post, which means I buy, we buy, names somewhere within 40 miles, men, women, and then I usually choose the demographics of yoga and meditation, thinking that would be most general that we could get. And so it gives us about 800 names and then I get the rest of them on my own page. So this, and the reason I'm saying it today is because it just made me stop. Not many things make me go, wow, it's 2019. And so we, uh, this is what this person, I don't know, male or female, I couldn't tell by the name and I couldn't find anything on Facebook. I did not erase it, it's on there still. And what it says is, wow, this church doesn't know their Bible. And then there was like some emoji faces things. And then a quote from King James, which for me as a New Thought student is one indication, all right, we've got somebody who thinks literally, yes, and there's lots out there in the world, and it's any quotes. They quote, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. <laughs> Obviously, this person has never met Therese Lee. Right? So I waited and I breathed, and I'm trying to find out who this person is, you know, going through uh, Facebook to see what it is. Can't find anything out about this person. So I wrote back and I said, well, good morning and God bless you, which I don't say a lot. And I'm wondering which scripture are you quoting? Because I think it's so important for us to realize, and I brought my Bible as an example. This is the Bible I use. It's all labeled, all got all these strings. They're all coming out now. Because Imagine the power of which we can abuse people by using this, which is what this person was doing, yes? So that's why I teach Bible. That's why I'm a Unity student, because we look at the metaphysics. We go back and we see, what did Jesus really say that applies to me today, that would apply to Ty, who's in charge of now our PowerPoint, training his dad on how to do this? <laughs> Right. How do we live teachings that are somewhere about 2,000 years old and yet priceless? Are they the only teachings? I don't believe they are. Are there ones missing? Absolutely they're missing. The Q Gospel, check it out if you haven't read it. You know, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, all of these great books that somehow were not chosen back in the day when they decided, and a pardon to all you gentlemen, by men, what would be in the Bible? Right? So this is, I mean, you know, I, I just unpacked it the other day and I thought, wow, wow, it's a lot. So, so then I get back a, t a, a message from this person and it says, you're the teacher, I'm not the teacher, you know, something like that, like, why should I teach you? And I'm putting the emphasis on the syllables, obviously, you know, but all I felt was this big, you know, kind of thing. And I just sat with it and I thought, wow. Wow, wow. But I have received a lot of that. Um, I have a little clergy sticker on my car and people will come up and say, oh, is your husband a minister? And if I'm not in a ministerial mood, I say, no, he's dead. <laughs> it's truth, yes. It stops the conversation and they go, but you still have a clergy sticker on your car. I said, yes, I'm the clergy and Yes. And they're like, oh, well, can we pray? We better pray, right? <laughs> and so it's so interesting. I've also been advised to take the clergy sticker off my car because of the cray crays that are out there. But I just thought, why not add to it? So now I got us from Vistaprint, these magnets that are about this big, and they say Unity Spiritual Center Hilton Head with our website, and now they're on both sides of my car. <laughs> just, you know, a little bit more attraction for us. So, 
we we made a presence yesterday when we were we were the very first people I said so Barbara Magada, Barbara Fiskerell, and Carolyn came to help me. And I said, ladies, if you haven't known that there's a competitive side of me, there is. We're going to be first in line. <laughs> so we got our sign, we went up in front, and we were right behind the roller derby babes. And um, <laughs> Rabbi Tippy was there. There were a whole bunch of people there. Congregation Beth Yam was there. They didn't have a booth. But I'm going to talk with them about, did you see our position in the program. We were on the back page because it was such a great ad. So we made a presence. Lots of people came by the booth. And as we know, when we do trade shows, because it's kind of what it was, they wanted the candy. They didn't necessarily want to sign up, but we made a presence. And so I'm grateful, especially after this post last week. And so I know that I afflicted somebody um, who you know, was comfortable in their own being. And I know there's, I have probably every version of the Bible there is in physical form, and we know we can get them online. So what I want to address, because I, I'm really concerned about um, us being the movement inside of this great county called Buford, to be the change we want to see, to know there is nothing but us. When, we, when you find yourself talking about them and those people, they, I want you to stop talking and breathe for a moment because that's what creates separation. So someone said to me, why are you so excited about walking in this parade? I said, it's not about whether or not people are gay. It's about the fact that we need to recognize humanity in all the forms that it comes in. That diversity, you know, I, I imagine if the world had, everybody had red hair and freckles. It would be a different kind of world, right? And so we want all the different colors and flavors. And I never knew rainbow could be put on so many different types of clothing yesterday. <laughs> Fabulous outfits. I was like, wow, that's actually really cute. So can we be the presence? And that's what we've agreed on the board. We're going to be the presence of what it looks like to support anybody and everybody that's living and even two-legged and four-legged creatures, right? So we're gonna have a pet blessing. I don't know where we're gonna have it, but that always happens in October because that's the Feast of St. Francis and he happened to be the patron saint. You know, there's my Catholicism coming in, right? For animals, well, why are we not? So I've blessed horses, I've blessed cows, I've done all of that. I thought maybe that's another way we can do that here. And so we're gonna be stepping out in different ways. And I invite you to step out with us as you so feel called. So there's a, a term in unity, in new thought, that's called race consciousness. And it doesn't have to do with race per se, the differences, like the song said, you know, because only when we believe there's differences are there differences, yes? So I'm going to invite us to add G, which would be the symbol for God, to race, and then we'll get grace. Imagine if we could all come from grace, right? The race consciousness stems from fear and lack, limitation, separation, anything. And I invite you, I've, I've read most holy texts. I, I am not a quoter of anything. So I was hoping yesterday when she was interviewing me, don't ask me my favorite scripture because it's hot and I probably won't remember it. And I certainly probably wouldn't be able to quote it. I do know it today, but. And so I want us to live scripture. I want us to live whatever it is that you believe in that's good and great and wonderful for all people, whatever that is. And so when I get challenged and my Irish stays controlled, um, then I'll say, you know what? I live scripture. I choose not to memorize it and to just talk about it, right? And so that always stops a conversation as well. So one of the things I had to take for Unity to keep my credentialing up is a diversity and an inclusivity class. And so one of the things that happened was a, um, a colleague and a friend of mine does a one-woman play on Bessie Coleman. And so I'm going to that. She's my friend. She's the head of the urban school and um, she's African American. She was one of the first people involved in FAA at a certain level. And she does this outstanding one hour total dialogue by herself about Bessie Coleman. I hope she'll come here. I've asked her to come. And so I said to the people, 
you know, in the registrar. So I'm gonna take this one here, and I want, that's gonna be for diversity. They're like, mm -mm, it's not for diversity. I'm like, why is it not about for diversity? It's about an African-American woman who was the first female pilot, even though history doesn't say that. And so why would that not be? I know it would surprise you that I called a little bit of consternation for the registrar people. They're like, it's just not, Therese. And I said, it's not an acceptable answer. <laughs> the people were flowing out of the room to watch this presentation that I've seen. It's on PBS, you can find it. And so, lo and behold, guess what? We all got credit for diversity for attending Sandra Campbell's Bessie Coleman presentation. So I'm not one who stands by when a voice needs to be said. I also know when I supposed to be quiet. That may surprise you, but it's true. And so I, there were other places where I was like, wow, that's just not right. And other people stood up and said things. And so unity and unity is happening. And I know it might seem like a foreign type of concept, but it hasn't always been. And we're getting closer and closer ministers sharing things with other ministers. We had 37 graduates um, 30, no, 37 from the urban school alone, and then another, I guess, 15 or 16 from all the other paths in unity. So last Monday, there's a flood of new ministers ordained and licensed out in the field, which is fabulous, in a time when church is shrinking. So very exciting to be there. Some of them were my students, and you're like, yes, go for it. So they were not experiencing any fear or lack or limitation or separation because they were in their grace consciousness. And boy, it was fascinating to watch them all. Oh, and the speech, if you, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll get it on our line. Kathy Beasley, who is from the Urban School, and man, she just gave it to everybody. I could never have said that in 06 when I graduated. She just said, what are y'all doing? How are you getting the word of God out there? But she just did it with sass and attitude, and it was fabulous, and people were listening. Oh, maybe I need to somehow be involved. So I want to mention that, remember last week we talked about um, hospitality and Nancy Harris has stepped up with Chris Baker and they're going to create something for you all to be part of on your terms so that we can have hospitality every week. So a round of applause, please. <laughs> and of course for all the other volunteers because church doesn't happen without volunteers. So if we get out of the mindset of fear, lack, limitation, or separation, guess what we get to move into? Love, abundance, freedom, and oneness. Especially we have 4th of July coming up. So if we were f feeling love and we knew of abundance, we felt freedom and we knew oneness, would we not then f be full of grace? Yes. And what would be gone would be all of those embedded thoughts, like the things we learned from our parents or our grandparents or our teachers or whomever ever had an influence on us. And never with disrespect, you know, I'll say to my mom, thank you for all that, and I've evolved a little bit past that. With not a um, negative connotation, it's just I've studied more, I've done more things, I've grown outside of the Catholic religion that was mine, that kept me up until I was 17 and then realized, okay, there's got to be something more, right? Mm -hmm. I knew there was a divinity in me. I just didn't know where it was and found unity then. It took me only about 12 years later to do that. So if we can figure out that we want to be those things, love, abundance, freedom, and oneness, how do we do that? Well, the, first of all, we have to not be afraid. Not be afraid. I'm not saying you have to be bold, bold and audacious like I am, but don't be afraid. And it tells us that 365 times in this book. Almost one for every day, right? Yes, it's true. So why do we get afraid? Well, it could just be simply what I think spiritually is that we think there's two powers. We think there's God and something else. That's what we talked about that day when she called me with the news and the diagnosis in the words that the doctor said. And I'm like, mm-mm, that's not what you have. And we restated it. Because God is always the prognosis. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have the pain or the suffering. It just means who's moved? Where's God? So look around, yes? And, and this is what I say, don't believe everything you think. And when it comes up, I have to do this every day because my mind is very active. 
I have all of those acronym name things after me, supposedly. Um, and so I have to settle down and say, hmm, what does it mean? So we've talked about fear and what it might mean is false evidence appearing real, right? The other one is forget everything and rise. I'm thinking today, how about forgetting everything about reality with a small r? And the reality with a small r is what we see with these sets of eyes. And we buy into it. Like yesterday, I was buying into the fact that I was never going to be cool again. <laughs> and I don't mean cool. Like, I meant cool, you know, physically. And no matter how much water, you know, all of those things that happened. It was just in South Carolina, Therese. This is the conversation I'm having, you know, at 2.02 in the afternoon. It's South Carolina. It's June. It's hot, right? It seemed hotter than Florida, actually. I'm not sure. So if we can face everything and know that we're going to forget anything about the reality with a small r, then what happens is it shifts us into remembering what we talked about just a few weeks ago, that what is reality with a capital R is that of God. Everything that is of God is the capital R reality, which means it's forever, it's unchanging, it's permanent. God is in us as us, through us, right? So that means we can let go of those things. So if we sing the song, One Power, bam, there goes the, the fear. Wait, there's only one power. So my mind, my little mind, my ego mind that gets going, gets to stop and go, oh, I'm in the wrong power chamber here. Let me change silos or let me just change my mind. Let me not believe everything that I think. So then what happens? Course of Miracle tells us the only reality is God, and that reality, we have another name for that, which would be love, with a capital L. So if we want to shift out of our race consciousness into the grace consciousness, that's all we have to remember. No matter the circumstances, again, asking, what is this teaching me? What am I to learn? What is God trying to get my attention about? If you go to the wise, we become victims, and then we're all, we have other itis, and we're blaming other people, and all of those things. We also get to remember that there were many promises in this great book. And the promises are usually represented by the symbol of a rainbow. Yes? So here's just some of them. That we might have life and have it abundantly. Would that be okay? Right? So for me, Abundance, sometimes all I ever want is some dark chocolate, right? So that's abundant. It also, you know, it just depends on where your mind is in that moment, right? That we know that God will provide for us, like it says, for the birds in the trees. How many of you notice birds? I know there's some of us that are big in that. Cardinals are my favorite, right? Just when I think, mm-mm, can't do this, there comes a cardinal or a dragonfly or something to get my attention and get me out of my race consciousness and into the fact that I am filled with grace. So a promise that our faith will make us whole. Whatever your faith is, I'm not the boss of you, right? We are not the boss of you here at Unity. We're here to just show you the many paths to the one God. That miracles will happen when you believe them. And this has nothing to do with Disney and the magical kingdom. It's about the kingdom inside of us and knowing that as we believe, so it will be. And not always on our own time, right? And so for those of us that like daytimers, yes, and planning and all of that, which of course, if I can't remember that I love that, as I got to the airport at five o'clock on Friday to be home by noon, which meant I had to get up at three, you know, all that. And then you get there and they say, oh, I'm sorry, your flight's been canceled. We can get you home by eight o'clock. They said, it's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then I realized yelling will not help, <laughs> right? And so the grace of, okay, hmm, I'm not sure I'm supposed to spend the whole day in the Kansas City Airport or the Dallas Airport. Could you just get me to Charlotte and then I could drive home? No, because I'm not in control. 
had to walk around, get off the steam, get the Irish out of me, you know, and just be like, all right, write your talk here today, Therese. Be in the present moment, make some phone calls, do those things. So I had to let go, literally, because I wasn't in charge. And then I was praying, praying, praying I could get on this flight to go to Dallas at 10.30 as opposed to 1.30, because then maybe I could somehow finagle another flight. Got on the flight. I've been flying for over 40 years. It was the worst flight in my life. And I am holding on to both of those seat things. And I actually grabbed the lady next to me who I thought was gonna lose it. So she had her bag out, breathing into that. I said, we're all praying out loud now. And I started talking out loud. I said, we're all gonna breathe in through our nose and we're gonna exhale through them. And we're just, <laughs> everybody in the whole plane. I have never experienced that amount of turbulence in my life. And so I'm saying to myself, well, Therese, you wanted to be on this plane so bad, this is what you got. So then I had to, you know, then I had to switch it to these, and so I said to the girl next to me, she said, she was a lady, she's like, do you think we're gonna make it? I said, of course, pilots only, I, with my real like minister voice, I, of course, pilots only fly when they know that they can be landing safely and securely. And she's like, do you believe that? I said, I really believe it. Hot. My hands are like on the wheels, like this. Oh my God. And, the, and my feet were lifting up. The body was slamming down. I have never. And I thought, okay, Therese, there's your lesson. Stop thinking you're in control of anything. Stop it. But I, you know, what I can do is I don't stay in that monkey mind or that race attitude very long. I can shift over. And really, it was because these two next to me were so frightened. And I was like, oh, God, I'm the minister. I should be, you know, the one. I said, I'm a minister. We're praying. They're like, I don't know what you're praying. I said, you just pray your prayer. I'll play mine, you know. And so we landed. And I said to the pilot, I'd kiss you if I could. I said, thank you so much for getting us here safe. He goes, oh, we had it all the time. I said, well, I knew that up here. I didn't know it here. Yeah. You know how they greet you as you walk off the plane. And then I... Yeah, so then I had to wait in Dallas for seven hours. Yeah, that was fun, you know. <laughs> Dallas, where planes do flip-flop out of, especially American Airlines ones, and that's who I was flying. I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Who's going to talk on Sunday? So everybody get a talk ready. Get a talk ready just in case I need to call you, you know. So I went from fear to knowing that God was in charge. I went from lack of, oh my, I have no control to knowing I don't have control. From limitation to, oh, I'm never gonna get home, it's gonna be so late, all the things we make up in our mind, and separation. The moment we get into any of those emotions, I'm separate from the peace that will bring me understanding, the peace that will calm me down. And so it was a full day of religion in my life on Friday, you know? <laughs> and then we wake up yesterday morning, 6.30, who was, a, who was awakened by all the storms. And I'm thinking, I planned for this parade. We got to go to this parade. I've done all this work. Give it an hour, Therese. It was beautiful. And then I forgot to pray about the heat. <laughs> so that came. So the realization of the one power that Penny spoke about brings us back to the reality that when we allow our egos to get involved, when I allow myself to think I'm in charge of anything, which happens often, then even this morning, just a little too busy, I go into the, I'm gonna, I said to Beth, I'm going to go in and be quiet and finish, you know, getting myself ready for this. She's like, great. So I go into the little conference room over here, but then I have to do, I have to stick my nose into something. So I walked out and I'm thinking, wait, where's the equipment? Where's all the equipment? I left it outside. Again, an active mind. Shut the door. The door's locked. <laughs> so Michael is the savior of my life, <laughs> Nyla, and they came in, you know, well, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes later. So here it is, everybody. Get peaceful. Know it all will be great. Stop the thinking that something is separate from us. Stop the thinking of fear and limitation and lack. And know that as we stay in our divine order, knowing there's one power, then all can be well. So close your outer eyes and let's take some time now in meditation knowing that we're not going to believe everything we think, knowing that the one power in our life is what, by whatever name that you choose it, right? We are not the only path. Unity is not the only path. There's many paths to the one power and the one presence, for which I'm grateful. 
I'm grateful for you all supporting us as a board and as congregants going out to have a presence in this town, in this community, to show our support that we embrace the humanity of everybody, no matter what it looks like, because we are honoring the divinity in each and every soul. There were doggies there yesterday, you know, and had on their little pride scarves and things like that. Bless them. Coming in to support their, their parents, so to speak. Walking in the parade. And the youth that were there. Celebrating for each other. We don't know who anybody was because everybody just had on all these rainbow colors. And it doesn't matter. The truth is we are perfect, beloved children of God. And so think of this about yourself. I am a perfect child of God, a unique, unrepeatable expression of God. You're worthy and you have worth. We are grateful for your presence here with us at Congregation Beth Yom and all of those who are watching online. And that's the consciousness that I suggest you might think about spreading, the one of grace that says we have one face and that is the face of God. And so we breathe in this magnificence And we go into a time of silence, committing to ourselves that there is only one power and one presence, active in the universe and in our life, God, in the silence. As you say to yourself, I am loved and I am loving. And we breathe into this knowing. We accept it as our truth. And we say thank you. And as we bring our attention back to this time and this place in these sacred and holy grounds we call unity, spiritual center, Hilton Head. We say thank you for all of our blessings, seen and unseen. And we pray this in the name and after the nature and under the authority of the living, loving presence that is us, individually and collectively, in our grace consciousness. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And so we breathe and stay into this stay in this contemplative move, and we say thank you. As we prepare ourselves for our love offerings,